So here are 13 things I learned so far in this multi-day motorcycle trip through Baja, California. One, I want only one pair of very nice motorcycle jeans, not Kevlar lined, but that other fancy fabric that I can wear to a cafe or restaurant without changing. Then I want super light pants like pajamas and nothing else for pants. Two, bring seven days of socks and underwear and undershirts. I like this merino wool stuff that basically will dry on your body really fast if you get sweaty and start to cool off. And it'll dry in just a couple hours if you can wash it in a hotel room sink. Three, if I ride six or seven hours, I don't want to do anything that night or day. Nothing is appealing except eating and resting. Four, while it is good not to have an itinerary, I should have a few important things to do in a location. Especially plan this because when tired and hungry, it's hard to figure out. Five, if, if there is a sign for a cow, it also means goat. Six, choose when to let a car pass you or they will pass you on a curve and figure they can run you off. Seven, when I was on the side of the road stretching my legs, only in Baja California sewer, they tooted their horn as they passed, no matter what side of the road I was on. I think they were saying, hey, are you okay? Eight, in small towns, find the slowest old car and follow them. You'll never get a speeding ticket or surprised by a tope of death. Nine, go slow because around the curve could be the most astounding road condition you could ever imagine. Ten, if Mexicans slow down with flashers, it must be really incredibly dangerous because they otherwise drive like daredevils. 11. The brand new huge trucks going 85 miles per hour are probably on a regular business route. I saw this when I used to drive around Sonora. So these guys probably have the road memorized, like I did for the Coastal Highway 3 in Sonora. But if you don't have it memorized, don't drive like them. 12. Many people had misinformation about crossing the border, what is open in Mexico, how difficult it is to find gas, and the condition conditions of the roads. So to clear that up, the border for a U.S. citizen is effectively open as usual. I didn't see a lot closed in the towns except some bars and nightclubs that never had a restaurant. There are quite a few brand new gas stations located on brand new newly paved roads. I think in the last few years there has been a big investment on highway infrastructure in both Baja California states that is now completed. And I learned something from my gear, so number 13, it's either cold or not cold. If it's hot, I'm used to that in Tucson, I just sweat more, I have to drink more, and the air blowing on the sweat feels good. I really don't want sunburns, so I have to watch out for that, so I always cover up. But if it's cold, it's impossible to put on enough layers with the wind still cutting through everything, or getting clammy because I'm wearing something you know, like a practically plastic bag liner. So I would like a tall necked, breathable, windproof jacket that is very thin. And for that, I would actually pay quite a bit of money. It probably has to be a Gore-Tex special hiking thing. And I don't need any zipper pockets or any pockets, so it should be really thin. Uh, and then besides that, I want a plug-in heated jacket with heated sleeves. Um, those two items would be, would be pretty small. Um, and, you know, when it's cold, I just wear those two items. And I, I, worst case, I could plug in the jacket, you know. Uh, and if it's not cold, I just stash them away and it probably fit in a small area. Um, and what I did is I brought two wool sweaters and a brown ski hoodie uh, that I've used in the past while camping, but they were really ineffective with the wind.